Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We're here in... Uh, <laughs> let me get through this. <laughs> uh, you're already distracting me, Mr. Mashur. Uh, episode two of The Mo Show, um, which is proud to call Saudi Arabia's first uh, bilingual English-Arabic podcast. Uh, my guest today is um, really one of my oldest friends uh, of all time. Me and him met back uh, in 1990. Yeah. When the Chicago Bulls were relevant. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to drop that on you. <laughs> Mr. Mashur bin Hajela, how are you, Mash? Habibi, how are you? You well? Yeah, great. Uh, I'm actually very excited and happy to be here. Uh, I know it's... Pleasure's mine, man. Habibi, man. Really appreciate you coming here. Habibi. Anytime. Your first podcast ever? Uh, yes. It is. For sure. Did you ever think you'd uh, be on a podcast? No. Um, how was it being uh, in a house for three or four months with three kids in the midst of corona i'm glad to see that your color hasn't changed <laughs> you know you're you've uh, you haven't gained or lost any weight yeah it, it looks like it didn't phase you and not not much phases you mash yeah well alhamdulillah uh so uh, i don't know if the audience knows but they will eventually as we go on so i was assigned to take part uh, in a jaguar I pace e trophy series that travels around the world. Awesome. We started in December uh, and the plan was to go until July. So my mindset was focused on staying fit. And that's what helped me a lot through this corona period. Mm -hmm. Even though we didn't know what the plan was going ahead, but the mindset, I mean, the mind is so strong that if you have a goal, it will carry you. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, Irrespective of, of what perhaps the body says. The yeah. mind is probably more powerful yeah. than uh, than the body. It's a mind game. You hear about marathon runners and ultra marathon runners. It's a, it's all it's won or lost in the mind. Yeah. Um, so yeah. so I mean, continue. Just like you said, I mean, even with racing or any sport you take, if if you, before you step in the stage, if your mindset is not already winning, you're already losing. You know what I mean? So uh, so yeah, going back to what you were saying. Uh, I actually, I was looking at the positives, uh, spending time with my kids. Usually we're always out and about, whether we're traveling, at work. So to spend two, three months of quality time with the kids, I think that was a good positive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, know, you get to know them all over again, you know? Yeah, um, that's true. Um, I mean, if you look at it, yeah, I mean, it depends which way you look at it. Um, life was really fast paced. Um, yeah. You know, we wake up in the morning, we just rush through everything. I remember the first week of being at home because uh, you know we we told employees not to report. Mm. Um, it was probably the best week of my life that I can remember because I was on my own time. Yeah. I mean, on on a why didn't you get that sensation on a weekend? I think because it's just uh, you know it's expected. You know it's it's. But when two days and three days and four days pass and you're still at home, yeah. you know, and you really find yourself a new. Um, uh, rhythm, you know, uh, if you want to, I mean, I know people that learned cooking, studied master classes in, in new languages. I mean, the idea of this podcast came, you know, when I was on my own time. I don't think that idea would have come to me under normal circumstances. Yeah. Well, uh, I always like to say, you know, the, the, the Americans have this f famous saying, the rat race. Mm -hmm. So, and that's really what's happening in this world. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. people wake up and they're just on the go. Running around. Uh, yeah. Not thinking about uh, what's more important in life, you know, whether it's to spend a few, you know, a few minutes with their kids, whether it's to pray, mm -hmm. thank God for certain things in their lives, health. Yeah. No, it's just boom, out of the bed, straight into the car, mm -hmm. straight to work. And it's just an ongoing thing, you know, the rat race. And then you wonder, you know, why white hairs keep popping up. Yeah. It's because we're constantly running. It's, it's, it's funny. Sometimes I like to sit back and take a deep breath and look at it from a bigger picture and see that, you know, everybody's rushing and running around, you know, whether it's trying to make a buck or two or build their future or career. Mm. And sometimes it's, uh, I, I think I read it somewhere. It's like wherever the crowds are going you know just take a different take path a different, take the path yeah. less traveled by yeah, yeah exactly but that's yeah. that's what you do though into your you were you're a leader by nature i mean i don't remember you ever 
following the crowd you know you yeah. carved your own way through many things whether it's you know your uh, your um, creative designer side or the cars that you bought i mean not everyone buys a yellow m3 yeah. you know i'd probably go gray or black but you were like no f that i'm gonna do it my way yeah and i will throw some 22 inch <laughs> dds bbs <laughs> Uh, but that speaks a lot about your personality, yeah, even from a young age. Yeah, I, I, as long as it's not forced, <clears throat> it's natural. Um, I guess you're right. Uh, I never looked at other people and tried to imitate. Mm. I always liked to be myself, and it came natural. It's not something that I was you know, forced to do or anything like that. I'll tell you something that I remember from our childhood. Yeah. You were the only guy in second grade to rock uh, baggy tracks <laughs> from school. <laughs> That's true. I remember people emulating that um going to the school shop and asking for a couple sizes up yeah. obviously the early 90s baggy was in yeah. uh, some would argue that i am still into that but okay. it's not true i, I gave it up a few <laughs> years ago um but you were one that would always rock the tracks low come over <laughs> your shoes and uh, definitely a couple sizes up <laughs> I remember kids uh, trying to copy that style. Yeah. Um, and, and it's amazing to, to see that, you know, on a simpler level when you're younger, you haven't really changed. It yeah. goes for you. It goes for anyone. Yeah. You know, like you are kind of, you know, that inner child in yeah. you is, yeah. is still there even at a, even, even yeah, in a later at, stage at in later life. Later stage in life. So, to, to, I mean, that phase, you know, rocking the baggies and all that, I would say that wasn't obviously me, just my style. I think I used to watch a lot of NBA back in the day. And I did live in the States in uh, 91. Uh, I went to school there for a year in Washington, D.C. So I came back with a different uh, perspective, you know, just by living there for a year. Yeah. So I, I kind of picked up on the basketball style and the Jordans yeah. and all Your that. Your Bulls were killing it back then. Yeah. 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 So, that, uh, <sighs> so that happened after uh, school over here. You did, you did D.C. for a year or so. And then... And we went about 10 years disconnected. I was in the UK, then I moved to the US, yeah. and uh, 2005 is when I moved to Dubai, and it was like we didn't miss yeah, a, beat. a beat. Yeah, like I left yeah. in 95, literally 10 years, exactly, 95, 2005. Okay. Uh, That's a real friendship, you know? Sure. I have it with maybe guys that I can count on one hand, that you yeah. can go X amount of time. It yeah. doesn't matter how long. Yeah. But when you're back, it's like you didn't miss a beat. True. Uh, I remember the, the first day you came in Dubai. Uh, it was so exciting to see you back. I think you were in the, were you in the States? Did I, you, was, I was. You in, started I was in Boston. Boston okay. uh, and then I tried to renew my visa and they were like, uh, not with your C pluses, you're not. Okay. So well, yeah. I was like, okay, I know a guy in Dubai. Let me give him a call yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and see what's going on. Yeah. It well, was Hani and he's like, Mo, make it happen. Everyone's yeah. here. You know, you'll, you'll enjoy it. You can transfer your credits. Um, and um, and that's when I was fortunate enough to come back and see you guys. Yeah, and, um, yeah, amazing. So the the funny story about us moving to Dubai, all of us, I guess. Uh, me and Hani started college in LA, uh, so it was Palace Verdes North. It was like forty five minutes out of LA, uh, but that was two thousand and one. September eleventh happened at that time. So you went. Into the, you, you went the month of the attacks? So we were already there before. Were, yeah, we started college. Real shitty timing yeah, to go. Absolutely. You, you couldn't even, okay. Yeah, so uh, we started college a month in. September 11th happened. We were like, all right, boys, what are we going to do? We started hearing all these stories about, you know, uh, racism in, in Boston, mm. and mostly in the East Coast. Yeah. The West Coast were more chilled about it. And we're like, no, let's pack our bags and head back home. So we flew back to Saudi. Uh, we stayed, I would say, six months here. And then we're like, all right, now what? What's the next move? And everybody was talking about Dubai being the next, you know, Middle East hub yeah. for college and, you know, for life. So that's when Dubai happened. And, and I you guess moved you later followed. that year, 2001, was it? Uh, 2002. 2002 you went. Yeah. And that's really when it was kicking off. Yeah, like they built Burj Al Arab in uh, on the turn of the millennium, I think. Yeah. Hamid bin Rashid was like by two thousand had a midnight. Had, I want Burj Al Arab to be finished, yeah. and I think they met that target. Yeah. So when we moved, <coughs> Burj Al Arab was already there. Okay. Uh, this was obviously pre Burj Khalifa, mm. uh, and it's just taken off yeah. since, and it really did end up being the next big thing. 
Well, uh, we're following. I mean, we are. Yeah, we are. Yeah, Saudi. I mean, they publicly stated that you know uh, Dubai uh, showed the whole Middle East what they could yeah, do. What could be done? Yeah, yeah. and like we're following. It's uh, it's um, it's yeah. it's a good thing, you know, seeing yeah. what uh, you know, seeing how they bridge the gap between East and West. You know, it's yeah. welcoming to all. Um, and you're seeing, and you're seeing that happening in Saudi. I mean, you see how much our government is, is investing in tourism. Yeah. Al Ula, Al Ula, Madain Saleh is yeah. a sleeping giant. Yeah. When these people come and they see what we have over there, yeah. just quickly pivoting back to the Dubai, Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid said, How have you guys kept this? The biggest secret. Yeah. I don't know what the quote was. Yeah. It was like, how did you guys keep this under wraps? He did. Huh? He was he was in awe and loved everything about Madain Saleh. The world. I mean, where? I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, you know, ge- geographically speaking, there's not much out there that is similar. Mm. Maybe Petra in Jordan. I'm not so sure. But mm. Anna, I had the pleasure to go to Madain Saleh mm. earlier this year, mm. and it blew me away, dude. Yeah, sleeping giant. So uh, last year we had Dakar, which is a famous mm. rally. That yeah, so Saudi hosted it Huge. last. Yeah, yeah, Saudi hosted it. So most of the foreigners were blown away. Uh, they couldn't believe. You know, again uh, going back to Saudi being a stereotype, and you know, so they couldn't believe the the tarmac that we had, the scenery that. So they're doing it again this year. Yeah. Um, so I they think signed, they signed a five-year yeah, contract, yeah, ten-year contract. Ten, I think ten. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, I th- they so genuinely were blown yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, I was reading yeah, like twi- yeah. Twitter had like people were very very impressed. Yeah, and then Prince Abdelaziz went out and said, you know, we promised we were going to keep improving it every year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what a, a platform to showcase the beauty of our country mm. than twenty or thirty helicopters filming a race? You know. Aerial, aerial angles, and w- the race starts from you know whether Chicago. it's yeah, yeah, and then it goes all around the kingdom. Yeah, so it's really, it's covering the it's whole kingdom. 10, yeah. 10 12 thousand kilometers, something like that, which yeah. is like from here to either the east coast or west coast. I mean, just yeah. a lap of our country. Yes, yeah. yeah. It no, actually checked. It's not too far. I'll get the facts, but it's about yeah. from from here to yeah. New York City. I flew last year to Neom. Uh, I was a guest and they flew me to Neom just to take a look at the stage set up and so what's, lucky. what's going on. Uh, How did you interpret first impressions? Uh, it, it's definitely a different world, uh, especially if you get into these nitty gritties of the techni- technicalities mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But being in the middle of nowhere, camping site, that's how they sleep, they camp. Mm. Uh, it was uh, like a two week marathon, you know? Uh, across, you, what, across. Was it, what were you doing there? What was your normal day like over there? No, no, it was like uh, in and out, okay. uh, a few hours, just to see the campsite. Ah, uh, d- during that car. During that. Oh, car. okay, because yeah. they, they they spun through yeah. Uh, Neo. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went there. I met uh, Fernando Alonso, who was taking yeah, part. Yeah, yeah. That's so yeah, it's pretty cool. I have high expectations about what their plans are for Neom as well. From what I've read. Yeah. Uh, futuristic city, um, no, ele- no, no, you know, yeah, like uh, uh, bio, go green. Bi- yeah, um, no uh, combustion sol- engine cars. Yeah, you solar. know, it's just like nails on a chalkboard for people like me and you. Yeah, yeah. car fanatics. <laughs> but um, it's it's. I love the the realization of you know what the future holds. Yeah, and um, you know, self sustainable city, low uh, carbon footprint, and all that. It's uh, where I mean, you know, you you can tell that the right people are in place making decisions for you know a, a sustainable future Saudi Arabia yeah I like where they're going yeah me too clean canvas yeah. I mean they're starting with a clean canvas uh, so the the two the two barriers that we face here in Saudi in terms of uh, we're talking about racing one uh, family always go against people that want to race I face that a lot. It's a dangerous sport. Uh, they don't want you in harm's way. So they're pushing back while I'm pushing forward. So it's always, uh, you know, a, a, a battle. And then the other thing is the facilities. So luckily for me, I started go-karting in south of France when I was eight, nine years old uh, because there was a go-karting facility. And you'd summer there? Every, and I, every, exactly, yeah. exactly. So I'd summer there every summer and I would hit the go-karting track every summer. And that's how I groomed myself or learned the skills of go-kart. Whereas here in Saudi, that, that did not exist. Yeah. So how can you, uh, how do you want someone to grow up and groom into a race driver when you don't have the facility to teach him? Yeah. You know? 
versus the West, yeah. where they have everything, you know. Is that, is that changing now at the grassroots level? Um, are, are facilities being built for people like your son and my son who want to start go-karting? Yes, yes. That's good to see that, you know, we're, 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 you know, there's a shift happening and a recognition that this is a, a real sport. It's controlled. It's safe when, you know, when monitored and martianed and all that. And it's not the narrative of street racing, because like when you hear race driver, yeah. our parents would think, yeah. oh, street racing. Yeah, exactly. You know, just uh, I've driven the Nurburgring. It's, uh, you know, it's nicknamed the green hell. It's, it's hell. Unforgiving? 80% of the corners are blind, so you don't know what's coming next. Okay. Ele so, elevation? Uh, oh, yeah. Elevation to extreme. And that's actually where I learned that uh, you know we see the Porsches with the wings like the mm. GT3s mm. you you only really need it in the Nürburgring because of the elevations downforce, you, you, downforce yeah. you know um, it w it was it pleasurable or was it man fuck this I'm not doing it again yeah uh, no I'll definitely do it again uh, it it was it was unreal to be there driving a Porsche uh, but it's scary because apparently if you crash your car or uh, hit the barriers They'd have to re uh, red flag the session to Everyone fix stops. everything. So you pay for the whole damages. Uh, you pay for the delayed time. So the cost can just shoot up if you, cr you, you know. So you're, you're dealing with that in the back of your yeah, mind. Yeah. Uh, that there's, oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's draining. It's uh, just extra unnecessary anxieties. Yeah, exactly. And it's like you're signing your life away, basically. God you damn. Know? Yeah. But you loved every minute of it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, list me some of the cars that you owned from uh, from day one, um, at least, well, that you've owned prior to the E46. Okay, so my first car was a Peugeot. This is in high school days. It's a Peugeot, but designed by Pina Farina, okay. which is the, the same designer that does Ferraris. All right. I, I had a green one in Dubai days that, yeah. I am, that I'm trying to make people forget, okay. but it's, it'll be forever staple to me no matter how many cars I buy. But Peugeot, Peugeot is a good car, you know. Mine wasn't. Yeah, okay. yeah, it was the uh, Afdab Tufahi, <laughs> okay. apple green that just was, uh, was, uh, was yeah, okay. it didn't do me any favors. So my first car was a Peugeot, high school days, coupe. Um, Data figure? Data figure. Uh, and then going to college, we went to Dubai. I got an E46 BMW. And then after that, I switched to a Corvette Z06, 2006. That had? Uh, that had a race car My exhaust ear system. ears are still ringing. Yeah. <laughs> Straight pipes. Yeah. Uh, that was Did you loud. eventually sell it because it was too loud? No. Uh, I loved that car to bits. I only sold it when I switched to the Ferrari 430 Scuderia. Okay. So. Oh, you went from that to the to the Scuderia. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So moving back from Dubai to Saudi, mm -hmm. starting you know our career here, uh, there was a Scuderia up for grabs for a really good deal. I had to jump on it, so I just let the Corvette go. Basically, yeah. So the Scud, as you call it, huh? The Scud. Yeah, so going back to the cars, yeah, so sold the Corvette, got the Scud, and that was like, for me, it was a milestone. Uh, first Ferrari ever. Uh, never thought I'd actually be in a Ferrari at that age. I was probably 26, 26. It, w it was a dream car, but uh, the original values when it came out were so high that I always thought it was a dream. You know, it was far-fetched. But luckily, in this market... 40% uh, appreciation? 50. 50%? 50, 50. That's buy time. Yeah. Zero That's mileage. A lot of cars. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you mean zero mileage? It was brand new. It was... You got yours brand new? Yeah. I thought you got it with a couple of thousand no, kilometers. No, no, no. It was brand new. So, exactly. So, uh, finding that car... Uh, I never thought I'd find that car brand new for that price. So, 26 years old, just married, um, you know, we were expecting uh, Alia to come along, mm -hmm. first baby, and obviously life priorities, house, da 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 but I couldn't miss out on that yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So, I just rushed, sold the Corvette, sold a few stocks, and mm -hmm. got into, you know, buying that Ferrari, Ferrari yeah. Still have it today, yeah. 10 years, uh, and it's still growing uh, with me, it's growing in the market. It's actually uh, going up in value, I think, today. 
So I think it was a good buy. You probably anticipated that when you bought it 10 years ago. Definitely. So because, this might appreciate. Yeah, because it's not your normal Ferrari. It's actually what they call a limited production Ferrari. Yeah. So my money was safe in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I never regretted that. So that was the Scud. And then there was, you know, other cars coming in and out, uh, you know, daily drivers, uh, fun toys. Like an Evo? Like an Evo X. The car uh, was mad. Yeah. Uh, tuned it to like 420 wheel. And the car just weighs about 1,250 kilos. So power to weight was unbelievable. It's a rally car. Mm -hmm. Driving that on the road uh, looked like uh, Ken I, Block. It, it, exactly. It's very, <laughs> a lot of Ken Block there. Yeah. We were in an intersection coming out of football, um, playing football once, me and Mash. Yeah. Approaching an intersection, I was in whatever car I was in. I, I was in his yeah. Lancer. Uh, Lancer? Yeah. Lancer. Uh, yeah. yeah. So car coming, speeding on my right wasn't going to stop for me because whatever, I was intimidating enough maybe. But I was still in a Land Cruiser or something that yeah. you know should demand respect. Yeah. <laughs> you then, I think, just gave it a blip in neutral, yeah. and the guy slammed his brakes. It went <laughs> like <laughs> one of those. It stopped traffic. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, that's when I was like, what the hell is this car? And then you explained to me everything about the Yeah, Evo. yeah, yeah. So basically, it's, it, the, it's grassroots is a rally car, okay. and then it's famous for tuners to really bump the horsepower. And uh, yeah, you'll pretty much kill anything on the road, like, you know, Corvettes, Ferraris, whatever, Porsches. Yeah. Amongst all your success, mashallah, and, uh, and happy days and, uh, oh, and good times, you've had your fair share of hardship, all right? Uh -huh. uh, there was a topic that I was, you know, going on, you know, back and forth, yeah. uh, what, you know, wondering whether it's something that I do want to bring up or not. Yeah. And, and, I, and I chose to ask you before, and, you know, you saw graciously agreed to it uh, and that speaks volumes of what kind of person you are and yeah. it's about your two sisters Allah Irham Hum Allah Irham Hum yeah Mash how does one <coughs> begin to deal with something like that that kind of loss yeah well um, like you said life is not always uh, rainbows and sunshine uh, and this is something I learned from a young age actually uh, but uh, so before my sisters, it started with my dad. Uh, my dad passed away in 2010, cancer, colon cancer. Okay. Uh, Allah so that was the first hit. Uh, four years down the road, my eldest sister, Sara, uh, passed away uh, with cancer. And then, and then we were like crushed, you know, wow. She was like 41 years old. 41 so very young very young yeah uh um, married to my cousin yeah uh, she's been in my family. i i know her like I've, i see her a lot growing up yeah 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 i know that and only the best that you only hear the best things said about yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. Really, yeah, I mean, angel yeah alhamdulillah so and then we, when we we thought you know that's enough you know like uh, 2010 my dad then 2014 sara and then 2018 dima passes away uh, so it was just one hit after another and it crushed us but you know like everything in life you know you, you, you fall but then you have to get back up and you have to move on uh, but the hardest part was actually for my mom because sure. she lost two daughters, daughters. Uh, no more daughters left in the family we're just boys now yeah. but uh, so we had to be a stone for my mom, you know, sure uh, you were. yeah, uh, but uh, you know, to be honest, these are eye opening experiences that mm. show you that you know, you have a limited time in life, uh, enjoy it, uh, do the best you can, whether it's you know, for your career, your passion, or even good deeds, because that's pretty much you know, I mean, with Sara and with Dima, Allah irhamha. Uh, I saw that when they passed, their story and their good deeds just kept going, you know. Uh, and that showed us that, uh, you know, you're here for a limited time. And then when you go, people talk about you positively, positively or negatively. But with them, mashallah, it was always just positive. It really is. You know, um, you, you know we just don't <sighs> know. I mean, you touched on so many 
profound things, but you just we just don't know how much time we have, and every day counts. Yeah. You know, like if there's something out there that you want to do, an initiative that you want to give, you know, put your energy towards, or a charity you want to set up, yeah. or you just don't know how much time you have. So doing something that would continue, you know, when you're gone, yeah, uh, is something that we don't look into enough that we yeah yeah it it rewired my brain you know like when when i realized what you have been through life can be taken from us at any point yeah and let me say one thing more uh, because you know i had a lot of time to think about these things because they were heavy you know heavy so after the sad part i started feeling uh, happy for them honestly that's big yeah that's it's, that's big, big, bigger picture it is the bigger picture uh yani alhamdulillah this is our religion mm-hmm. uh, we believe in god we believe in afterlife so our time here is limited and then there's an eternal life after so their past life they're already there and our time will come you never know when mm-hmm. but it will come eventually everybody has to die yeah. it's just a matter of when Uh, so as long as you're here, you know, make it happen, enjoy it, uh, do the best you can and, uh, you know, be kind to people or there are only two ways that you can, um, gain, uh, positive points like in, in yeah. you know, for the non-Muslim, yes. uh, listeners, yeah. hasanat and say at positives and negatives. And yeah. then at the end, and when it's all said and done, if your positives outweigh your negatives, you go to heaven. And if not, then it's vice versa. Then you know where you go. Yeah. Um, but two ways you can get positive points when you're gone mm. is by uh, Sadaqa Jariya, a charity that continues to live in your name, or uh, a, a child who, who prays for you, one of your children who pray for you while you're gone. That's, uh, yeah. that's, that's heavy stuff. So when I learned of that fact, I tried to pray for my father every day. Because those people are in a place where they can't get any more points. Yeah. What did they leave behind? Yeah. Is there a well you built that people yeah. are drinking out of? Yeah. Is there, um, you know, a, a charity that can, say, or yeah, a mosque or or some real estate that houses the less fortunate that live for free, you know, due due to an investment you made that continues in your. Is it a child that prays for you? Yeah. Um, it's 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 deep. It really like makes you yeah. know the, the hairs on your. It on is. Your arm. It is. It's a different world. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, m- most people go through life just thinking about life on the ground, mm-hmm. and I always actually tell my wife and family, uh, it's a shame nowadays. Most people never look at the sky, because they're always looking at their phone. And they're looking at the ground. You know, your perspective in life is always down. So true. And it's never up. Yeah. Whereas there is a, a freaking galaxy up there, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you only notice that if you go up to the desert where it's pitch black yeah. and you look up and you're like, what the hell? You know, I'm, I'm actually in space flying, Seriously. you know. But we don't think about these things nowadays. At all. It's almost like, subhanAllah, dunya... Uh, you know, Hada Sheikh Hamza Yusuf actually says that the word dunya comes from deni, which is low. So in this world, we're actually in the lowest, whereas everything should be up wow. from here, you know? So true. That's, yeah. that's, um, that's really some perspective. Yeah. We never stop and pause and look up. No, because you realize yeah. that uh, it's, life is bigger than what we know yeah. you know look at look at the stars you know who created all that yeah. you know so it's it's a it's a perspective that not everyone really yeah. grasps yeah. yeah well what what just i need some of your what are your words to live by i mean if someone if i was to say like what's yeah. a quote that you always like falling back on or yeah. like you know something that well, you want to move to your you know yeah well um alhamdulillah yani i would like to think of myself as a strong believer Uh, I, you know, I pray my five prayers a day uh, all the time. I never skip them. Um, life is, you know, life is all about ups and downs. But I, I always, uh, you know, like to say, Tawakkal ala Allah. You know, uh, pray, just let it, you know, believe in Him. He'll pick the best thing for you and so on. Uh, but I also believe in, in following your passion, yeah. your dreams, your goals. Uh, you know, when it comes to me in my racing, uh, people always, you know, associate me with cars and racing. 
But it's, Do you blame them? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. But what they don't understand, because most people think it's just cars, you know, but it's not. Uh, when, when I get strapped in a race car, uh, I zone out and it's just me and that animal, you Your know, element. And, and my element. Yeah. And I, I never experienced uh, euphoria like that before. You know, it, this is my happy zone. Yeah. This is my happy place, yeah. you know. So uh, passion drives, uh, passion drives you a long way. So I would say always follow your passion. Don't settle for anything if you're not really enjoying it. Yeah. You know? And maybe uh, it's beautiful what you're saying. Just to add to that, um, pursue your passion and money will come. Don't do something yeah. for the money. Yeah. Do I, what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I never follow money. I, I really don't care about money. Obviously, money is great to have, and you know you can, uh, you know, travel the world and buy things and so on. But uh, real happiness doesn't come from money. Real happiness comes from doing what you love. You yeah. know, experiences. Experiences. Yeah. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. whether it's climbing Mount Everest or doing this or that. You yeah. know. Yeah. Amazing words, Mash. Yeah. Uh, we can go on for hours. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not, not a bad guy to, uh, to find sitting next to you on a long flight. <laughs> if any of you get the pleasure to do that. Yeah. Uh, Mash, just to wrap up, man, yeah. anything you want to you know, throw out there? Any last words? I mean, anything, man. It could be absolutely anything. Believe in God. God is great. God is big. Uh, life is short. Um, you know, spend your time wisely in it enjoy it uh, but definitely always think about what's coming ahead and i think from my experiences with my sister's passing and my dad your life is limited to, to time so uh, always think about the eternal life as well don't forget about that life will pass by quickly mm -hmm. and when that day comes you know i've seen lots of people that we buried uh, your time will come so you got to think about uh, what comes next you know to be ready for it yeah well it's steve job said it best yeah, he, because you know today the world we live in is all about steve jobs and electronics mm -hmm. and, uh, when he was in his bed dying uh, and he wrote a letter you know he said um, um, you know, live your, your, your day as it's your last, you know, because you never know when you'll get another chance, uh, you know. Um, so, like you said, to maximize your day, uh, thinking it could be the last, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's your kids, being around them, showing them love, because, you know, even parents today, not a lot of them spend time with their kids showing them love. They might go out to work, come back tired, and just, oh, I'll, I'll deal with him tomorrow. But you don't know what tomorrow holds. Kid, you know? kid gets scarred that way. Yeah. You know, and you compound that over a few occasions. Yeah. By the time they're 20, I don't think parents should wonder why are they turning out the way that they've turned out. You know, maybe yeah. it's because of repeated neglect, neglect. Um, that, uh, that, that has ultimately resulted in their personalities being that way. And, and man, I'm really mindful of that. Like, you know, whenever I'm around my son, I just want to ensure that he you know is getting everything he needs from me and if he wants me i'm there because the first couple of years you know they're 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 very sensitive yeah and it's like you said it's only when you experience loss yeah do that you? do you value life yeah. you know because yeah. it's like i remember clearly when uh, when i buried one of my sisters uh, and then you had to turn around and move on uh, and then there was like a gap okay that's the end of life and then you go back to life yeah you know, and it, and you, all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, how do I go? Where do I go from here? Where do I go yeah, from yeah, here? Yeah, which way? It's like you don't have a map. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, yeah, it takes time to. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it, uh, and then you start to realize, okay, wait a second, we're all, you know, we're go all, all gonna end up like that. Yeah. So just maximize the time you have here yeah. in the best way possible, yeah. and put your faith in God when that day comes it comes Those you know you're the, ready for it best words of wisdom yeah. Habibi man thank you so much for taking Pleasure, you know, more than an hour out of your time Pleasure. relax enjoying um, it I really appreciate it enjoying um, it
and you know you're going to hear from me you know yeah, in a couple yeah. episodes time to get you back and definitely because uh yeah and he, you dropped some wisdom on Habibi, me man. anytime and, Relax. Uh, you know the world can learn a lot from you and what you've been through Habibi, thank you so uh, it, love you appreciate your you. brother and i'll be more than glad to come here anytime you i want. really appreciate anytime. it you know where i live if one day you know you want to send the scud yeah absolutely um, i'm going to be your neighbor soon yeah and uh, yeah. I do have an indoor car garage. Okay, so great. So I know how you take care of this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, we'll check in with you soon, buddy. Habibi. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Man. Anytime, man. Awesome. Awesome.